hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel trouble free in today's video i'll be explaining you about asymptotic notations in the subject of design and analysis of algorithms so if you have not watched my previous video about time complexity i suggest you to first watch that video and then come to this video so that you'll understand it more clearly okay first what do you mean by asymptotic notations it is a mathematical way of representing the time complexity of an algorithm you know what is time complexity of an algorithm right the amount of time an algorithm takes for its execution is called time complexity now by using asymptotic notations you are measuring the time complexity of an algorithm okay mathematically got it so here we have four notations actually to be more precise it's five notations okay uh, but according to jntu h syllabus since i am going according to jntu h syllabus in that it is only uh, four notations but still let us look at the fifth one also that is very simple okay first the first one will be very big guys because you have to understand right the second one on which it will be simple okay don't worry now it is a most frequently used notation it will always represent the worst case time complexity okay so by using big o notation you are representing the worst case time complexity that is the maximum time um, an algorithm is taking okay so this is more frequently used notation why because if you are considering maximum time it covers everything it covers minimum time it covers the average time and it covers the maximum time right so that is why we are using big o in most of the cases okay so big o notation basically it is used to represent the worst case time complexity okay and here we will be considering the upper bound only that is the maximum time okay and in this maximum time also we will be considering the least maximum time so what is least maximum time you will understand in the example don't worry uh, for as of now what you have to remember is big o means worst case time complexity and maximum time got it maximum time is nothing but you are considering the upper bound okay so we are having a graph so this is the graph here we are taking n n on the x axis n means input variables how many input variables we are having okay and here t t on y axis t means time simple okay now we have drawn a graph we have two functions f of n is one function and g of n is other function now you are representing f of n in terms of g of n got it that is you are representing f of n in terms of order of g of n that how you represent will change from notation to notation in big o you'll have one general form in little o you'll have one general form in omega you'll have in theta you'll have one like that it depends okay so then according to big o notation how you represent it is f of n is less than or equal to o of big o of g of n okay f of n is less than or equal to big o of g of n so here i'll tell you when you remove the uh, order symbol like when you remove the o symbol you will be getting it as f of n is less than or equal to c dot g of n here f of n is one function and g of n is also other function c means it is a constant which is always greater than 0 okay and here we have n right n should be always greater than or equal to k okay and k should be greater than or equal to 0 okay so basically you need to remember this thing you need to remember this general form for big o big o means first you have to write it is a most frequently used notation it is used to represent the worst case time complexity it is used to represent the upper bound i mean we uh, we will be considering the upper bound only and you have to draw the graph which is here and along with the graph you need to write this equation okay now let us consider the example for this for example you have a function 2n square plus n f of n is equal to 2n square plus n and you need to find out the time complexity of this function got it so in order to find out the time complexity you are representing it in terms of g of n right so g of what you don't know what is the order of this you don't know okay how do you uh, mention the order of this see among n square and n which is having the highest power 
n square right always we will be considering the thing with highest power suppose you have n plus 2 here 2 is not having any dig any power so n is having power 1 so here you will be considering n since you have n square here you are taking n square suppose you have n cube plus 2 n square in this case you will be taking order of n cube okay the highest power is always considered okay so that is why you will be taking n square constants or coefficients you can ignore them so 2 n square plus n is less than or equal to c of g of n square now just remove the g symbol so you get g, uh, 2 n square plus n is less than or equal to c of n square right so for now you need to uh, find out the value of c for what value of c it is satisfying the condition you can uh, you have to find out now okay for example if c is equal to 1 then what happens this will become 1 sir. So 1 n square 1 n square or n square is same so 2 n square plus n is less than or equal to n square is this true no 2 n square itself is greater than n square because suppose so for example n square is 4 then what 2 n square will be 2 4 is 8 right so 8 plus again something you are adding which is all obviously a greater value so 1 cannot be there now if you consider c is equal to 2 in this equation if you consider c is equal to 2 it becomes c into n square 2 into n square which is nothing but the 2 n square again 2 n square and 2 n square both are equal right but when you are adding n also right so when you are adding n obviously it will become more greater value n is a positive number right so this will also c so e is equal to 2 will also not work out for example take c3 3 means it will become 3 into n square which is 3 n square here 2 n square plus n is less than or equal to 3 n square so yes is this will work why because 3 n square is greater than 2 n square okay and when you add n also it will be obviously greater so that is why c is equal to 3 you can take you can take c is equal to 4 also c is equal to 4 also will work but we are not taking c is equal to 4 here why because i said here we are considering least upper bound for big o notation right we are considering the least upper bound least upper bound means here uh, among the upper bound values upper bound values are starting from 3 right so 3 4 5 all will satisfy among all these values which is the least 3 so we are considering c is equal to 3 okay let us substitute c is equal to 3 we get 2 n square plus n is less than or equal to 3 n square when you send this n square to this side it becomes minus 2 n square right 3 n square minus 2 n square you will get n square and if you divide with n on both sides this will become 1 and this will become n so 1 is less than or equal to n which is nothing but n is greater than or equal to 1 so this condition will satisfy for all values of n greater than or equal to 1 got it this is how you represent big o notation okay so this is all about big o notation now let us see omega and theta and the others others will be very uh, small guys don't worry it will not be this long so now let us go for omega notation in omega notation simple we will be considering the lower bound which is nothing but the minimum time that is we are going for the best case time complexity in case of omega notation got it so here we take f of n is equal to omega of g of n and f of n is greater than or equal to c of g of n so here we are taking greater than or equal to time okay in the previous big o we have taken f of n is less than or equal to right but here we are taking greater than or equal to and this is the graph if you can see f of n is above g of n in the previous example f of n was below g of n okay so again let us go with the same example f of n is equal to 2 n square plus n 2 n square plus n is greater than or equal to c dot n square now what could be the value of c c is equal to 1 will satisfy because 2 n square plus n is obviously greater than n square right any value you take you take 2 is equal to uh, sorry n is equal to 1 let us take so if n is equal to 1 2 into 1 whole square plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 square check 2 into 1 is 2 plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 so 3 is obviously greater than 1 so c is equal to 1 will satisfy c is equal to 2 also will satisfy c is equal to 3 will not satisfy why c 2n square plus n is greater than or equal to 3n square this will not satisfy okay because see for example say take n is equal to 3 
and if n is equal to 3 2 into 3 square plus 3 greater than or equal to 3 into 3 square 2 into 3 square is 3 square 9 9 twos are 18 plus 3 greater than or equal to 3 into 3 square 3 3 3 into 9 27 21 is greater than or equal to 27 is it true no so for c is equal to 3 it will not come for c is equal to 4 also it will not come so the value of c is 1 or 2 and among 1 or 2 which value you have to take you need to take 2 only because in you are in in omega you are considering the lower bound but you are taking the greatest lower bound in big o what we did we took the least upper bound right here we are taking the greatest lower bound don't get confused guys okay so that is why you need to take the greatest value among 1 and 2 so you are taking c is equal to 2 got it this is about omega notation now what will be the equation for us 2n square plus n is greater than or equal to 2n square so in this you substitute any value of n according to the condition of n greater than or equal to k it will satisfy here also you can substitute and check actually here we have this right for this also you can substitute and check n values you can take any n value substitute and check you will be getting the same condition okay now omega done now let us go for theta in theta it will give you the exact time why because we are considering the averaged case time complexity in case of theta notation okay so we are considering average case so how do we ha represent the equation for average case c1 here we are having two constants c1 and c2 not not a single constant okay c1 into g of n is less than or equal to f of n is less than or equal to c2 dot g of n that is we can say it is a combo of first and second one little sorry big o notation and omega notation it is a combo of these both things okay so this is the graph you can say f of n is, uh, is in the middle of both c1 and c2 okay so for this equation will be in this way right now let us uh, see g of n is nothing but n square so c1 dot n square is less than or equal to 2n square plus n is less than or equal to c2 into n square this is the equation we have formed now you can substitute the values of c1 and c2 you can check from 1 2 3 you can check the values of c1 and c2 you'll be this equation will hold for c1 is equal to 2 and c2 is equal to 3 okay so that is why c1 is equal to 2 and c2 is equal to 3 okay so just uh, check so if you take c1 is equal to 1 it becomes n square is less than or equal to 2 n square plus n yes this is true but if you substitute 2 yes it is still holding true right but if you take 3 it is not holding true so you can stop at 2 and this is less than or equal to uh, this part c2 dot n square for this also 1 2 3 4 you can check okay so this is about theta notation now let us move over to the little o notation little o notation is also okay and very simple guys so it is very very similar to big O but in big O what we did we took least upper bound right upper bound values we got from 3 4 5 and so on but we considered only 3 why because in big O we are taking the least upper bound but in little O no condition like that you can consider the upper bound it is not like you have to take the least upper bound only you can take upper bound value okay so here we represent it in terms of theta f of n is less than theta of g of n in previously in big o we had f of n is less than or equal to we don't have equal to symbol here okay see we don't have the equal to symbol here only less than symbol got it next little omega little omega also same in omega what we did we took lower bound but greater lower bound we took but in case of little omega you are taking only lower bound okay so no equal to symbol here also only greater symbol you are taking here also see you don't have any equal to symbol got it so this is all about this video guys i hope it is clear for you thanks for watching the video till the end if you're still having any doubt let me know in the comment section i know it, is, it has become a bit longer but still it is one of the important topic okay thanks for watching the video till the end let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic